Students, uh, today we are going to see about the topic cell injury and cell adaptation. The different contents which are which we are going to see in this topic are the definition of cell injury, causes of cell injury, which has also been called as etiology, cellular adaptation, what it is and the types of cellular adaptation we will see with an example here we will see both physiological and pathological example of cellular adaptation it is defined as variety of stress a cell encounter as the result of changes in its internal and external environment considered as the cellular injury so if you wish to understand about the cellular injury a cell is in a normal stress state when it's a internal and external environment are working together in a homeostasis condition now due to variety of stress and this variety of stress can come from external environment like uh, physical stress or there is some alteration in the internal functioning of the cell which con encountered or result into the generation of stress internally these both sort of stress will result into alteration in the internal and external environment of the cell which alters the homeostasis and result into development of cellular injury now if we want to understand about the cellular injury we have to see about a normal cell is over here present you can see the cell is in normal condition when its uh, homeostasis has been maintained uh, through internal and external environment and external environment fluid is in between the exchange will occur now due to some or other reason if suppose the cell will go through the stress if suppose this stress has been quite injurious or quite injurious stimulus has been given over there cell can directly go to have a cellular injury now if you want to understand about this injurious stimulus i wish to tell you about suppose a chemical has been directly gone over the surface of the cell and this chemical has been toxic to the cell this result into directly application to the cellular injury whereas a variety of stress are coming over there it could be any kind of stress <coughs> it could be compensatory stress stress it could be any kind of stress uh, that will affect the cellular homeostasis and the first and foremost if this stress has been bearable slowly and progressively you will see that cell will go for the cellular adaptation but a threshold will reach within a period of time when the cellular adaptation uh, the cells is not able to adapt the condition this is what inability to adapt and that contribute into the cellular injury now if you will talk about the cellular injury which we will going to see about our next uh, presentation there are two types of cell injuries are there i will brief about it one is a reversible cell injury and another one is an irreversible cell injury <coughs> if you will see uh, the cell injury occur and the cell injury which has been mild and transient one uh, where uh, the cell injury uh, can occur and after the healing process has been completed you can observe that the cell can regain its positions and the injury has been reversible and that type of cellular injury has been called as a reversible cell injury 
whereas if you will see if there is a slow and progressive cell injury will persist for a longer period of time that result into development of irre irreversible cell injury now this irreversible cell injury where once the cell injury will occur cell is not able to recover themselves from the injury and that ultimately result into cell death if you wish to see there are further been two types of irreversible cell injuries are been defined very well been known as necrosis necrosis is it is what when we can uh, kill the cell forcefully then it has been called as necrosis and another type of uh, cell death which is a reversible type of cell injury is that is what apoptosis apoptosis which is normally been defined as the programmed cell death so students uh, the next whatever we had seen is in etiology of there are several etiological factor that contribute into the development of uh, cell injury which are being given over here the first and foremost etiological factor that contribute into the cellular injury is hypoxia or ischemia hypoxia is a condition where the sufficient amount of oxygen which is required by the cell for its metabolic function is not been provided if you will see the word hypo means less oxia means oxygen if the less amount of oxygen is there then mitochondria is not able to synthesize sufficient amount of atp molecules and that ultimately result into development of stress and causes cell injury so as ischemia ischemia is a condition where the amount of blood or amount of oxygen supplied to a particular tissue or cell or organ is been reduced or less in comparison to the demand and this is what an hypoxia condition development due to ischemia another etiological factor which contribute into cellular injury is physical agent any sort of accident uh, knife or any sort of physical agent by which <clears throat> there is a cell injury occurs are come into the category of etiological factor of physical agents which causes the cell injury the chemicals we are having a lot of different type of chemicals which are responsible for causing the cellular injury if you wish to know example like a uh, gastric ulcer is there because of hydrochloric acid you can see the acid attack people are there when there is a acid attack occurs over there you know about alcohol result into or alcohol abuse of alcohol result into development of liver injury moreover number of drugs are there when we will intake in a larger quantity of the condition associated condition that we are having due to which we are not able to excrete them out in an effective manner so these drugs may contribute into the injury or may result into injury just i want to give an example of diclofenac sodium which is an anesthetic non steroidal anti inflammatory drug that we used to take to reduce inflammation and reduce the pain this anesthetic is very well known to cause nephrotoxicity in the patient especially those are suffering from renal failure because of its is not get excreted via your urine in an effective manner so it get deposited into your kidney and that damages the kidney moreover and another example of drug is that paracetamol it is also another class of drug of non steroidal anti inflammatory nsaids <clears throat> the only the antipyretic drug that we used to take for reducing the fever if we will take more than an excessive quantity of paracetamol it is well documented that paracetamol get deposited into your liver tissue and causes a liver damage and that's why you know in pharmacology we used to uh, produce the liver toxicity model also by giving 
the chemicals like alcohol induced liver toxicity <coughs> model we used to establish on the rat or the another model is there paracetamol induced liver toxicity model so these are what the <coughs> chemical and drugs which are responsible for induction of uh, are the etiological factor which contribute into the development of cellular injury microbial agents are also contribute into the development of cellular injury you know any sort of microorganism attacks to us the antibodies are secreted against them this antibodies will interact against the microorganism an antigen antibody reaction occur that contribute into the cellular injury moreover if you will talk about the bacteria and viruses more specifically viruses the viruses are not having any cellular structure for a any cellular structure for them they are for the growth completely depend upon the host cell once the virus enter into the host cell it actually order the <coughs> bacteria order the host cell to do the replication of dna for the virus and whenever uh, the virus has been completely grown in the host cell whenever it has been coming out of the host cell the causes damage to the the causes damage to the host cell and this is how if you will see microbial agents they are contribute into the cellular injury and it is very well known and reported things you know about in even in case of tuberculosis uh, it is well documented that tuberculosis occur because of an etiological factor the infection of mycobacterium tuberculosis bacilli and what is the prominent uh, clinical feature that you will observe in case of tuberculosis there is a damage in the lung tissues this is all microbial agent can be responsible for causing the cellular injury so as microbial agent number of immunological agents are there which can contribute into the cellular injury anything anything which we are taking from outside which is capable for <coughs> activation of immune system is been called as antigen when an antigen comes into your body automatically an antibody will be form against it will interact with this antigen and that antigen antibody reaction could result into the cellular injury which has been nearby located to the site so immunological agent is very prominently probably you know about number of uh, uh, hypersensitivity reaction we come across because of some immunological agents another one another etiological factor is a nutritional derangement see uh, for the normal homeostasis of our cell they will require an, a specific quantity of nutrients at a specific time like if i have to say your rbc for the synthesis and proper growth they require folic acid and vitamin b12 now due to some or other reason if this vitamin b12 is not been absorbed in a specific quantity which is required by the grow required for the growth of or synthesis of rbc then you can find the structure of rbc can change it will form into sickle cell shape and that result into a sickle cell anemia so as this is what a one example of nutritional derangement you can see there are number of nutrition are required for the normal growth of or normal homeostasis of the cell if either of the site if the nutrition is more than an excessive or if nutrition is less than which is required that contribute into the derangement of normal homeostasis of the cell and that could be responsible for the damage of the cell or cellular injury the another factor is uh, etiological factor which contribute into the cellular injury is fas and fab receptor 
if you will see this facial fab receptor it is most commonly associated with your age i will tell you why it has been most commonly associated with age just consider this is what your cell your cell is having a one specific receptor on its surface cellular membrane that is known as a death receptor this death receptor if you will talk about <coughs> this death receptor get activated with the age and with the condition of an individual person it is very well documented that the fas and fab receptor get activated after a age by an individual in an individual cell and which is contribute into the reduction in the slowly slow reduction in the function of number of organs of a body with the age moreover this death receptor or fas and fab receptor are responsible for the apoptosis process and i think in the last slide itself we had discussed about it apoptosis is a programmed cell death which comes under the category of a reversible so irreversible type of cell injury moreover there are some other factors are also responsible like psychogenic diseases are there you can see we generally do suffer from mania or depression which is nothing but a psychogenic disorders now if you will see about your neurons you can observe that in mania there is an over firing of glutamate receptor glutamate occurs glutamate is the neurotransmitter which has been called as stimulant neurotransmitter if it is been firing more than an excessive there is an increase in the post synaptic potential of or excitatory potential of the neurons that ultimately contribute into the damage of neurons there are some other factors which contribute into the cellular injury like iatrogenic if anyone will call you iatrogenic remember this word iatrogenic it has been related to the physician induced this this kind of physician induced a uh, cellular injury can be occur during an operation can be occur when a doctor or hospital person can inducing the catheter into the urethra of the patient means any sort of cellular injury can occur like an operation has been done by the uh, doctor then he, he has to make a cut to do the operation so that all comes under the iatrogenic causes of cellular injury another one is idiopathic diseases whenever we don't know any cause of any disease then it has been called as idiopathic diseases like urticaria is a idiopathic disorder like number of uh, neurological disorders are there which are idiopathic like neurodegenerative disorders are idiopathic disorders so we don't know about uh, cause then it is been called as idiopathic diseases and this, in these idiopathic diseases cell injury can occur because of any of the reason so next topic is there are four different types of cellular adaptations are there means a cell before going to for the cellular injury cell will go under the adaptation and these are what the different adaptation to which the cell will go the first and foremost type of cellular adaptation is atrophy second one is hypertrophy third one is hyperplasia metaplasia and dysplasia we will see in the next slide onward in detail each of the type with their example atrophy is one of the cellular type cellular adaptation where you can see uh, the consider this is what a normal cell if suppose due to some or other reason if the cell size get shrunken then this condition or uh, is known as atrophy means shrinkage of cell is been called as a condition of shrinkage of cell is been called as atrophy as per as the physiological functions are atrophy are there you can see uh, 
the brain size get reduces or atrophy of the brain is occur in the normal physiological condition with the ages so with the gonadals gonads also you can observe that with the ages the gonads organs and the brain size get reduces it's a normal physiological atrophy example is there with the ages brain size get reduces and the gonadal size also get reduces whereas this pathophysiological examples of atrophy is there just consider a uh, starvation atrophy where the particular person is not getting the food now when we are talking about a person you can consider it about the particular cells or particular organs of that person if they are not getting then sufficient amount of nutrition does they are these cells are able to synthesize the sufficient amount of energy no absolutely they won't be able to synthesize the sufficient amount of nutrition and if there is no nutrition for the cell you will observe that cell will not grow cell will not flourish cell will not going to multiply and because of that reason you can observe that the size of the cells get shrunken with the starvation so with an individual person also if he is on a starvation condition you can see the size of an individual person can reduce this is how with the cell ischemic atrophy which is an another example just take an example a particular kidney <coughs> particular one kidney is not able to get the sufficient amount of blood what will happen these cells present over those kidney are been getting the sufficient amount of oxygen no absolutely not when they are not getting the sufficient amount of oxygen does they are able to flourish does they are able to grow properly their cells which are present over there no but obvious and that's why it result into shrinkage of cells of kidney occurs this disuse atrophy means suppose a particular uh, organ or particular tissue or particular uh, part of your body has been less in use then uh, the neurons and the activation of the cells is not been there so proper metabolism will not occur to that particular part and because of that reason atrophy may occur it is very commonly observed in any number of type of uh, uh, number of type of this muscles when when muscles are been not in a proper function then there are chances that atrophy may occur so the same thing will occur with the pancreas too neuropathic atrophy is there where the motor neurons are not functioning towards a particular muscles so that particular muscle is not been getting the sufficient amount of impulses and the particular muscle is been not performing its function in a proper manner so when the particular muscle is been not functioning properly does that muscle is been utilizing or able to get the energy in a proper manner no and that's why it result into what atrophy over there the same thing with the endocrine system also if a particular endocrine system is not getting sufficient amount of nutrition you will observe that the size and the quantity of those particular endocrine glands are also been reduced so with the secretion is also reduction reduce in that and this is what a pathological atrophy that you will commonly observe in case of an individual who is suffering from these conditions second type of cell adaptation it is what hypertrophy if you will see the hypertrophy just consider this is what a normal cell if suppose the there is an increase in the cell size then it is known as hypertrophy so what do you understand with the hypertrophy hypertrophy is a condition when there is an increase in the size of a particular cell then that 
condition is known as hypertrophy. Now we will see the physiological example of hypertrophy. The best example is pregnancy. I wish to tell you that pregnancy is not a disease. It's a normal physiological condition. Normally, a woman used to have a uterus having a particular size. When the woman used to be pregnant, they used to, they used to and they have to carry a baby or zygote in their uterus. So as the days progresses, you can see there is an increase in the size of the zygote. And as there is an increase in the size of the zygote, the uterus size is also been increases. There is an increase in the uterus size. It is because of there is an increase in the hypertrophy occurs during the pregnancy in the uterus of any woman. Moreover, you can see there are number of people those have been working in the uh, working for the gym. Whenever they are going and they are bearing more weight on a particular muscle, that muscle get elongated and that result into muscle building or something. This is what occur when a person is been lean and thin and he is going for a gym, there is an increase in the size of the muscle. This is what an another physiological example of hypertrophy. Whereas pathological example of hypertrophy is, <clears throat> you can see the cardiac muscle, it is very commonly been observed that suppose somebody is having a hypertension, just consider this is what an heart having the four chamber. Now just consider this particular aorta has been coming over there. A person has been suffering from hypertension from a long period of time. So the particular chamber which has to work a lot under the hypertension, it is what always left ventricle. A person who has been suffering from hypertension from a long past history, you will observe that these muscles are having the pressure again and again for several years. So every cells of the muscles will have a particular elasticity and having a capacity of resistance. You will observe that it is very commonly observed in an individual who has been suffering from hypertension from a long period of time and it has been uncontrolled hypertension. There is an increase in the size of left ventricle. And this is very commonly observed. It is because of hypertrophy. There is an increase in the cell size occurs in this place. So is with the smooth muscle, you can see number of diseases are there in which you can observe that there is an increased hypertrophy occur with the smooth muscles too. <coughs> you can observe hypertrophy with the skeletal muscle. You can observe hypertrophy, compensatory hypertrophy. The best example if I have to tell you about the smooth muscle or compensatory hypertrophy example you can talk about the your uh, you can talk about your uh, lungs also you can see your lungs just take an example uh, there are two lungs and a particular condition is there like tuberculosis where one lung has been completely damaged now your body need the same amount of oxygen and that same amount of oxygen has been provided by now only one lung. And while it has been providing the same amount of oxygen, it has to work a lot. And that is why you will commonly observe that the compensatory mechanism of providing the oxygen result into permanent dilation of the lung tissue. Majorly it occur in the disease like tuberculosis when one particular lung has been completely blocked or completely functionless then the other part of the body or other lung has been doing the compensation and while doing the compensation after a time it loses its elasticity hypertrophy occurs the vasodilation occurs this is very commonly observed in case of hypertrophy in case of tuberculosis the next one is 
Third type of cell adaptation is hyperplasia. The temporary increase in the number of parenchymal cells which result into enlargement of organ often been called as hyperplasia. You will find that hyperplasia is often been observed to be occur in presence of hypertrophy. Occur due to increase in the mitosis of the resulting cells. Neoplasia causes changes in the genetic composition of the cell could result into hyperplasia. If you will see the example, you can see the physiological hyperplasia example uh, as you will observe in case of a hormonal implasia, uh, hyperplasia. You will observe that in a pregnant woman, you will see that there is an increase in the size of the breast during the lactation. which you will observe the breast size enlargement it is what a condition of a hyperplasia which commonly been concurrent with the uh, pregnant woman's uterus which is related to the hypertrophy if you will observe about the compensatory hyperplasia you will observe that uh, we do have different three different types of cells one cell which we can which will not been able to replicate or which will not able to multiply one which will multiply at a specific quantity at a specific speed and third type of cell which has been generated or regenerate or multiply them very fastly and liver cells are of third type and that's why you will observe that regeneration of liver cell hyper after hepatectomy which we will even perform in the uh, induction of disease in the rats also you will observe that the increase in the regeneration of liver cells occur it is a very good example of a physiological hyperplasia moreover if you will talk about the pathological hyperplasia example that is what a endometrial hyperplasia uh, where you will observe that the estrogen is responsible for the regular increase in the endometrial size which is responsible for the pregnancy and uh, if the estrogen quantity has been reduced suddenly that result into de shedding of endometrial layer which contribute into which actually result into the menstruation in women moreover uh, another example of pathological hyperplasia is wound healing you will observe that we do suffer from several type of wound and body used to heal these wounds after several after a specific period of time and if you will observe the process of wound healing you will observe that there is a fibroblast cells are there which will proliferate and because of that reason more than pro fibroblast cells even epithelial cell linings also proliferates over there because of which wound healing process will accomplished even you can see the example of warts skin warts which is occurred due to papilloma virus infection uh, skin warts it is an outgrowth of uh, uh, skin tissues which occur over there in case of war, which is stimulated because of papilloma virus. And uh, the example of hyperplasia is skin vault. Another type of cell adaptation is metaplasia. Metaplasia is defined as a reversible change of one type of epithelial mesenchymal cell to the another type of adult epithelium or mesenchymal cells occur means in the metaplasia one sort of epithelial or mesenchymal cells can convert them to a, another type of 
epithelial or mesenchymal cells. If you will see long time of metaplasia, if it is occur over there to a specific tissues, specific cells that contribute into the development of cancer. If you will talk about the uh, types of metaplasia, there is a epithelial metaplasia. You can see the example squamous metaplasia. In the bronchus of a chronic smokers, you will observe that the epithelial tissues which are been present over there can convert themselves to the uh, mucosal or gran or goblet cells. And because of that reason, goblet cells are the cells which are responsible for the secretion of mucus. And that's why you can observe in a chronic smokers, the mucus secretion has been severely higher as compared to the normal people. Moreover, if you will talk about the epithelial metaplasia, you can observe this similar thing will be there in case of a uterus of old age people. Whereas the columnar metaplasia, where the intestinal metaplasia has been healed in the chronic gastric ulcer. Whereas second type of metaplasia is mesenchymal metaplasia, where the osseous metaplasia is the first and foremost example. Whenever we are talking about the osseous, it is a terminology which means that the deposition of calcium. You will observe that uh, the mesenchymal cell of the arterial wall are converted or there is a deposition of a severe calcium. And because of that reason, you can observe that the contractility capacity of the uh, cells which are present over the arterial wall of the old age people are been quite reduced. And because of that reason, there is a threshold will be achieved over there. Another one, cartilaginous genius metaplasia, which are responsible for the healing of fracture, where the cartilages are converted, uh, tissues are been converted into cartilages, which are help in the healing of fracture. The last type of cellular adaptation is dysplasia. If you will you if you will see this word dysplasia which means that disordered of cellular development which oftenly accompanied with the metaplasia and hyperplasia in combination you can observe that majorly <coughs> dysplasia affect the epithelial cell lining and it can change the characteristic of the epithelial cells present over there like you can observe the characteristic changes in the epithelial cell lining that increase in the number of layers of epithelial cells, increase in the motility activity of epithelial cell lining, a dis or disorderly arrangement of the cells of basal layer to the cell surface that will also be observed. Moreover, you can observe that the cellular and nuclear pleomorphism which means that the variety, uh, variability in the size, shape, and staining of the cell and even nuclei has been observed in case of dysplasia, which is generally been observed in case of a cancer too. So this is how uh, we are end with the today's topic, that is cell injury and cell adaptation.